Welcome back to my bench. Here I have another 07 and newer cluster. I believe this one was sent in by a viewer. It's the common issue here with the display that's going on. I'm just going to go ahead and boot it up and confirm. Yeah, we got activity everywhere and we should have gotten some displays come up by now. So let's tear into this and see how bad it's going to be. I've already removed the fasteners from the bottom. So we'll just go ahead and dig in. I'm expecting the typical blowing up MOSFET. Sometimes it's just a solder joint. Well, sometimes just a solder joint fails. If that's the case, I still replace the MOSFET anyways. And sometimes the MOSFET just blows its guts out. So let's see what we got here. And here I see a hole already. There's a MOSFET that is in charge of the vacuum fluorescent display. And as you can see, let's see if I can get some light on that here. There's a hole in it. Well, <laughs> a blister anyways. So definitely the MOSFET blew. But the next thing I usually do, try to get an idea on how far back the damage went. There is a 100 ohm gate resistor just right up here, and I can tell by looking at it, it looks like it got a little warm. Oops, sorry, I'm gonna get a re in there. I can hold my lead still. Still 100 ohms. That's a possibly good sign. Although, maybe I'll move over to the microscope, it does show some heat. Usually, when mm -hmm. that is damaged, it also damages the driver chip, too. Let's move over to the microscope. Here's a closer look. At the MOSFET, I know I've had people ask me for the part number. Well, there's a part number right on it. And right there, sorry about the uh, trying to get a good focus here. Right there in the middle is the 100 ohm resistor that you can see is coming right off the gate of that MOSFET. And let me see if I can get a little bit, adjust the light on there to kind of get an idea, but it got a little toasty. And that is what goes over to this guy here, LTSX, for the people that want to know what the part number is. There it is, that's the chip that is in charge of driving that MOSFET. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and swap out the MOSFET. The 100 ohm resistor I'm gonna replace even though it's still 100 ohms. And I'm gonna go from there and see if we're getting any life out of the driver. First thing I'll do is hit the area with a little bit of flux. This is the Amtec 559, I think. All of you people that watch Lewis will know what I'm talking about. Use my uh, Chinese hot air to get the MOSFET off. Probably one of the best $40 tools I've ever purchased. I've been using it for a couple years now and it keeps on working. Okay. MOSFET off. I'm just gonna clean up these pads while it's still hot. And then go in for that 100 ohm resistor. When it comes up. Two leader devices, I like to just pick them off. Could have used the hot air, but... Hmm, I already had both of these heated up anyway. This is being a little stubborn here. Probably because it was subject to some heat. Just not going to want to give up. Hmm. This might be a case where the resistor kind of cooked itself to the board. Yeah, I have to take a look at that closer and make sure nothing's damaged. But that will happen. They do can cook themselves right to the board when they get hot like that. Looks good.
Okay, now it's ready for new parts. I'll start with the resistor, turn off my hot air. No, for the MOSFET. Get this cleaned up here. Get that tinned up just a bit. So, so I'm ready for it. Once I get it lined up. I like to start with the heat sink. No particular reason. I'm going to switch over to the other air the different tip. A little bit more meaty. Heat sink's got just, a, just enough mass on there that bigger tip helps out. I could use hot air to put this on, but nah, I like doing it by hand. Less collateral damage. If I hit it with hot air, then I gotta kind of worry about dickering up all the other components around it. And since this is the middle lead, it is connected to the heatsink, and that's why it's giving me a little bit of a fight there. But I would look cleaner if I just use hot air. Switch over to the big guy. When I first got this solder in there, I was kind of disappointed. I think it was advertised as being a 60 watt. Kind of from Radio Shack. Well, it's a Weller, so I figured, well, how bad can it be? After getting it home, I realized, well, it's not really a 60 watt. In the fine print, it says it heats up like a 60 watt. So it really doesn't have enough oomph for big connectors and big things, but it's a good medium. Medium sized side and iron. Well, that kind of looks a little, little goopy there, but a little bit excess solder compared to what it had coming out of the factory. I'm going to give that a quick clean and then, uh, oh, almost out. And then I'm going to power it up, see if we've got to replace that driver chip. from touching and go hey look at that we're okay now in this case the MOSFET didn't fry the board under it it didn't cause it caused any damage to the board so it didn't cause any unintended short circuits so this was a pretty clean straightforward uh, fix I'm going to give it just a few minutes to make sure no magic smoke escapes, but I think we're good. I'm going to go ahead and test it for a bit and reassemble. Here I finished cleaning it up, cleaned all the flux off, reassembled, calibrated. 
and we have on, a working cluster. There we go. So, well, I guess that's uh, it for the repair. It was at least straightforward. No drama, no smoke, no damage. Kind of a boring repair, but a clean repair. And all you need to do it is you need a MOSFET, a resistor, hot air station, a soldering iron, of course. Kind of recommend a microscope. You don't really need a microscope. Magnifying glass would work for some of the smaller SMD stuff, but once you have a microscope, you don't really want to use anything else. Of course, you need solder. A pair of tweezers is nice. Some solder braid. And uh, also a way to bench test it is nice and a way to calibrate it. There's already probably 100 videos on YouTube right now showing you the, the cheater method of calibrating with just tape and a marker. It, uh, it works. I don't like, I don't do it that way. I kind of cringe when I see people use the, uh, the Sharpie and the piece of tape to calibrate it. But maybe if I get uh, enough viewers and requests and whatever, see how my channel goes, maybe someday I'll go over electronically calibrating. But, uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for watching. Can't believe I think I have 150 subscribers, so there's 150 creepy people out there that like to listen to me talk to myself while I fix things. But, uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.